We are still on air until 3 o'clock. Touchline is the show this particular afternoon. My name is Maxwell Wasike. And of course, it's a show that discusses a variety of sporting activities. Uh, not everyone is left behind. And this time round, we're discussing football. Uh, with focus what happened in midweek, the qualifier between Kenya and Egypt for 2021 African Cup of Nations slated for Cameroon next year. Kenya, of course, failing to qualify for the second time running after, you know, the uh, Egyptian show in 2019 where they were bundled out at the group stage. Steve Ayo is a reputable man when it comes to matters football uh, analysis and, of course, he's joining us. Steve, it's been a minute, man. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> you see, during this COVID-19 times and yeah. you have a friend who you're not in touch with, you can get scared. <laughs> We'll just use the common expression to go to town. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> along, along the way, you'll always find us. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but um, we, we are doing well. Um, just dealing with the, with the new normal. Um, yeah, and, and trying to keep um, healthy every single day. It's, it's difficult, but we have to do our own. Yeah. How are things outside there, man? Now that, you know, sports has been suspended, for some of us who are passionate about these yeah. things, especially during weekend, in the afternoon, catching up a local game, yeah. Now nothing to resort to. Yeah, it's quite unfortunate. I, I feel like the government, whenever there are like um, issues, especially pertaining to restrictions as far as COVID is concerned, maybe the first thing they look, they look at is uh, at his sports. Uh, remember, they've not been allowing fans to go to the stadium yes. for quite some time now. So we thought that's like um, like a, a good measure, like a containment measure, at least you know, limit the number of crowds. Of which, I mean, even pre 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 COVID, we didn't even have like so many fans going into the stadium. So we thought that that's 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 good enough. You know, we accepted it. Um, we are trying to find ways in which you can just watch the game at home. But now suddenly um, they are telling us now uh, sports again. It's all locked down. Like, and you can imagine how many lives have been affected right now so it's really sad i mean i was just doing a, a, a rough calculation you're talking of 18 teams in the in, in the kenyan premier league yes. you're talking of like another 20 in the national super league if you multiply by roughly just 25 uh, players you are, that's like at least 1000 uh, families affected and that's just players really you're not and you see the, the problem venture. with our landlords they wouldn't care that you know uh, because you are a sportsman and sporting activities were cancelled you mm -hmm. have no source of income. of income. So if you tell them that you don't have rent to pay, they mm. wouldn't understand. They, they, they can't. And remember even the landlords, really, <laughs> they, part of, they are part of the high and the mighty. They, they, they'll just collect rent. It's just like a whole system that starts right from the top trickling down. So it's really unfortunate. It's sad. But um, yeah, what to do, man? Uh, it's the government. If they say this is the way to go, you know, we you have protest, to oblige. You, you have issues here. <laughs> Our senior Elias Makori wrote something this ma particular morning in Daily Nation, mm -hmm. and he's telling the government to rethink about their decision to suspend sporting activities yeah. in the country. I don't know, because from where he sits, he says, just like you saying, mm -hmm. that, you know, no fans were being allowed into, you know, the sporting venues. Most mm -hmm. of the events were happening behind closed doors. Yeah. So I think the measures that had been put in place in, mm -hmm. uh, for resumption of sporting activities mm -hmm. ought to have... Uh, been continue getting applied yeah. as we continue with. Uh, yeah, remember, remember one of the things uh, that happened before we resumed the game was that all the players in all the clubs went through the COVID test. Okay, then um, I, I mean right now we have the vaccine. Obviously, priority is being given to the essential workers, like you know, uh, frontline workers in healthcare, the teachers, and all that. But um, I was thinking, why didn't they just then roll out the vaccine? Because I'm sure that there's, there's enough dosage out there just to, for the athletes basically to basically just uh, prevent them or caution them from getting from getting the the the, the disease that might have been a, a way to look at it but um yeah like we said uh sports really i think the government normally use this strong whip so i mean it's just you just have to look at our leaders um, cs amina and you know all the stakeholders within the sports industry they are a total letdown uh, we, we may not blame the president himself because he gets advice yes. from low down but now if you're talking about uh, the CS, who's like, I think she's one of uh, the president's favorite uh, yeah. CSs. So if she can't really, you know, just just go to him and say uh, there are livelihoods that will be affected in a 
big, big way, uh, can we find like a, an alternative? Then you know, it, it suddenly just happens, like the axe just falls on you, like you don't even have time to think, you don't have time to plan. I think uh, this weekend there were supposed to be some NSL matches. Yes. I'm thinking there are some players that, that, that already travel to places like Mombasa. So suddenly we're being told you're not going to, you're not going to play this match. And remember for you to live, let's say even a place like Kisumu, all the way to Mombasa and for accommodation and all that. We are going to use I something in the region of like two to 250 to 500,000 shillings. So that's money going down the drain. So yeah, it's, it's really sad. Quite, quite, quite an unfortunate scenario there. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what happened in midweek Kenya against Egypt. Mm -hmm. We've seen how, you know, Kenya has been uh, glorified to have played a beautiful game mm -hmm. against Egypt that this is the best, you know, uh, <laughs> we've seen from Kenyan team. <laughs> uh, I don't know, from where you sit objectively speaking, what do you think about the Arambe stars, even as they prepare locking horns against Togo in Lome on Monday? Uh, when, I, when I came in, I had you <laughs> castigate uh, Osoro, saying that uh, he's glorifying mediocrity, which uh, for me, I mean, you, that, you nailed it. Yes. That's the thing. We're always a, a team of nearly there. You know, we, we, we look at positives in, in things that you should actually be like taking in completion. I mean, this was the, I think the easiest we've ever gotten an opportunity to go to AFCON. You're talking of Togo who, their, their glory days are pretty much done. You know, the time of uh, Adebayo, who used yes. to be such a big personality in there, you know, I mean, he used to like really psych up uh, his fellow players, you know, push them forward and all that, big personality. So the team was actually uh, built around Adebayo and they were performing well. That was the Togo of like maybe three, four, five years ago. <coughs> The Togo we have right now is, 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 is honestly like a useless team to, to an extent. They got beat by Comoros, I think, uh, was it home and away or something? Actually, they, they drew at home, they got beat away. Uh, Comoros, this is the first time actually they've qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, we've seen the, the last couple of editions, there's always that story of an Anandogu who upsets the rest. I think maybe Kenya, we, we just need to lower expectations, see ourselves as underdogs, you know, we don't rely on history. It's gone, we are terrible, we need to do a lot of things really just to bring our game back to a level that we, we can enjoy because even that match, I think Egypt also knew that uh, when they were going to that match, they knew the, the result that had already happened in the game between Togo and Komoro. So they were like, we're going to take it easy. We are not going to, you know, push ourselves the very uh, uh, edge, like up to the wall to ensure that we get a victory here. This called their so, first so goal. Someone, someone, mm -hmm. someone, as a Liverpool man, you mm -hmm. see someone was, was uh, condemning Mo Salah that mm -hmm. he played a horrible game. Mm -hmm. And there was a reply that, you know, Salah, first of all, uh, he was just being easy and casual because he knew mm. they had already qualified. Secondly, mm. he was trying to avoid, you know, yeah. getting COVID mm -hmm. and trying to avoid exposure, mm. uh, you know, to Kenyan players. You know, there is this, there is this narrative that, mm. you know, Kenya is, 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 is uh, a hotbed yeah. of this monster. Yeah. And uh, considering that, you know, they knew that... Uh, it was sort of a formality for them, mm -hmm. regardless of the outcome. Yeah, exactly. For them, it was a dead rubber, really. They didn't have to, you know, really, really push themselves. Like, you know, it's a must win for them. It wasn't that, that case. And remember even the goal that uh, they scored, even before we could touch the ball, Salah was like super involved. It was a very nice flick, uh, you know, it was a second assist for him. So I think Eric Ouma, who was marking him at that point in time, was like, okay, I'm going to have a, a bad day in the office. Because it was just one moment of, of brilliance, which you normally see a lot from Salah when he's playing for Liverpool. But, uh, you know, we have to give credit also to Marcelo. He really yes. uh, stuck. He was man him. of the match, right? He was man of the match. And, you know, it was not just about him defending Salah. It was about the kind of input that he was, he was, he was putting forward. You know, he was really uh, uh, bombarding down that left channel, you know, sending some very dangerous crosses into the box. So you have to give the young lad uh, some, some credit in terms of how he dealt with the game, you know, how he dealt with the play in itself. Because remember, when you're playing against uh, somebody like Salah, you don't just have to be a normal player. You have to, like, be some sort of a beast, you know, because Salah is in that level of being a beast. But I think Marcelo handled him well. And obviously, you have to give credit also to Daniel Sakari yes. on the other side. I mean, our fullbacks, I think they were, they were, they were quite... You think in Sakari now we have a permanent right back because that is has been Kenyan problem <coughs> over the years, getting, you know, a person who plays in that position the way the boy did. Yeah, I remember it, we tried with uh, Philemon Otieno. Yes. He, he, he had made that position his own until obviously we got that, he got that injury um, 
during was it during Afcon? Yes. Yeah. Then we, I, I thought that the fact that we were using Samuel Oluwande was just like a, a stopgap measure. I didn't feel like that, that's that's a future really. But in Daniel Sakari, he's just 22 years old. You know, he still has that um, that hunger in him. He still has age really on on his side. Yes. I felt like um, he, he gave us all the good signs. And remember, this is a player who just two seasons ago he was at Kakamega Homeboys. Uh, you know, playing his football there, having just graduated from school. So for him, I think the progress is really there. And th the good thing also with him is quite fit. Um, one thing I know my love about Karibangi Sharks players is that they are super fit. They can <coughs> run out of the pitch um, if you give them that opportunity. Yes. So he has that fitness, which is something that also Marcelo brings on the other side. You know, they have the, the, the good crosses on their feet. They have the defensive uh, mind on, on themselves as well. But they also have that fitness because you need to be running down that left uh, channel or right channel, which is like the modern day fullback. So I felt like um, he did himself a world of good in that game. Michael Engineer Olunga, it was a bad day for, for him, bad day in the office. He didn't uh, sort of capitalize mm. on the available chances. Is it because of, you know, those who are playing behind him, not feeding him? No, he got fed. He got fed. I don't think he, he'll complain whatsoever about uh, not getting chan chances. He got them. Yes. He got crosses into the box. He, he had a shot that, uh, you know, was put on his left feet, but yeah, I think yeah, he I was overthinking on, as far as, you know, like getting um, that shot on goal was concerned. Then, you know, a defender obviously uh, got him and, 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 and got the read of the ball, put it out for a corner. But in terms of service, I think he was quite service. It was just not a good, uh, a good day, day in the office. office for him. And I mean, we can't castigate him much. Sure, he's sure. a player who has been like, resourceful to the team. Yeah, 18 goals in, uh, is it 40 appearance, 40, 41. That's like a goal every three games, which which is not a bad return. And uh, remember, we've also been quite struggling with a player who would look at him and be like, do we really have somebody who can sure. uh, put in the work the way Denis Oliet used to? So, you know, Lunga, you know, I mean, he's His partnership with scores. Masood, did it work? Um... I, I don't think it did because Masood was doing a lot of defensive work. We've never seen him yes, playing down. Yes, he was down. sort of playing from <laughs> yeah, the back the wing. Yeah, <laughs> Most I, of the times. yeah, it was it was a strange selection. I mean, um, I when I, I looked at that lineup, I thought we were going for four four two, but we still did the, a four three three with Masood doing. Um, Maybe they were playing the, from under the instructions of the coach. Yeah, obviously, obviously. I mean, he sets up the team, so he must have seen something in training. They must have tried it in training before implementing it. Uh, but, you know, the only contribution I, I saw from Masood was this, you know, basically racing back and uh, denying somebody an opportunity on the, on the, um, on the left flank. I, I saw that. That's like the moment that I saw Masood in the game. So in terms of support, I don't think he got a lot of support from, from, from Masood, but you can't blame Masood as well. It's the instructions that came from the technical bench. So the team I know is traveling today, this particular afternoon in Lome, Togo, to play the last qualifier game mm -hmm. against uh, you know, the West African country. Mm -hmm. What are the chances? Should they live on a high, despite the fact that they have already been eliminated? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, if there's a game, you have to play it. <coughs> uh, you know, at the end of the day, you don't, you don't travel all that distance. You use all your resources to go and lose a match. In yeah, there. yeah. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be a professional at the end of the day, you know. Uh, unless, obviously, you want to fix the match, then you can go and do your own things over there. But, uh, yeah, so that means uh, they have to go in there. They have to put in the hard yards. Uh, they have to uh, basically just play to go as a team. Because remember that uh, these national Cups, they, they don't come so often. So if you're given one, remember there are so many players who want to be given that opportunity. So if you're given that opportunity, uh, take it. Um, yeah, give it your, your all, get a result and uh, look forward to the next one. Um, but yeah, I think the team will be quite changed. I feel like Agos Mule will make a couple of changes. Some of them uh, pushed by injury. Uh, remember Kenneth Mbuna has not yeah. travelled. Um, Anthony Akumo also has not travelled. I think he has a, a family issue. Uh, Johnston Omuru got his red card, so yeah, he'll, he'll be watching the game from home if he can get the, the, the link to stream the game. So th there'll, be, there'll be a couple of changes, so it will be interesting to see what kind of uh, a lineup that um, Ghost Mule comes out with. Just like you said, hope has been, you know, the word revolving around the national team. Should we build on that hope following, you know, what looked like a good game for Kenyan boys ahead of World Cup qualifiers? The other thing we have to ask ourselves is, uh, were we that good or were Egypt that terrible? I, I, I tend to go with the, with the latter. I thought Egypt, after scoring that goal, it's like they just decided we are not going to play anymore. They were quite terrible the whole time. If this was <coughs> a do or die match, I feel like they would have played better. I feel like even uh, El Neni would have been put in the game basically yeah. just to show up the midfield a bit. You know, he has that intelligence, he has that experience, he has that understanding with a lot of players who play in there. But I mean, I'm not taking credit from, from, from our team. I think that's the best game 
especially second half, we played in our home, home, uh, home ground against such a, a big team. I feel like uh, that's the big, best game we've played uh, uh, for, for quite some time now. So, yeah, like I've said, um, they just have to go to Lome and ensure that they get a result out of it. It's a dead, dead rubber match. It won't, won't help us uh, qualify, but um, maybe it will. Remember that even Gos Mule hasn't had like uh, enough time with this team. Yeah. Uh, he's just been playing as a friendly here and there. Um, but yeah, let, let's see what happens in Lombe. Chances ahead of Qatar 2022 World Cup? Um, the group again looks uh, manageable, at least the preliminary group. I think we have Uganda, Rwanda and uh, Mali. So you're looking at um, that team, then you're feeling Mali. Mali are not like in good shape. I think just like Togo, they are, they are, they are, their good days are kind of behind them. You remember the time of... Uh, <coughs> Uh, Bakayoko, yes, yeah, you know the Kulibalis and all that. I think they, they they used to play really some good, entertaining football. I think they even reached the was it the, the semi final or even the final of Africa Cup of Nations. So they, they, they are glory days. The, the days of the veterans are behind them right now. I feel like they're also rebuilding. So they it's, they are beatable. Uganda are our neighbors. We, we Remember what we did to them? <laughs> we denied them qualification to... And there has uh, been fierce rivalry between <laughs> the two countries. So yeah, yeah. It so it's going to be a great mission. Yeah, it's going to be a good match. Hopefully by the time we play them, they, they, there'll be fans allowed into the stadium because that actually plays a big role. Uh, Rwanda will be the underdogs in there, but I also feel like we'll be underdogs. Uganda will be looking at us and looking at uh, Rwanda as well and saying this is, these are teams that we should be able to beat. Then, you know, we go to Mali, get a, get a point or something, come home, ensure we win all our games. But yeah, that's one thing also we need to do uh, at home, man. We, we've, been, we've not been translating uh, that, that home advantage into, into results. We are, we are drawing too much, unless it's a friendly against uh, South Sudan, uh, Tanzania, who are behind us, really, some steps behind us. We've been getting too many draws at home. I don't know why. As we head to the conclusion uh, part of the qualifiers, I don't know what has been your pick up point in terms of you know the matches that have been played ahead of a uh, continental football in Cameroon next year what has captured your moment I think um, I have to say the the ability that um, the local base players have shown yeah sure yeah for me that has been uh, such a such a big thing you know uh, some of these players have are, are just winning their first caps you know and you know they've taken it in their strides I'm looking at uh, somebody like uh, Abdallah Hassan you know um, He's always shown that potential at Bandari. I, I felt like he didn't really, that was not his best game, uh, you know, save for the goal. Uh, that was not his best game. I, I thought he was quite wasteful in that game. Uh, we tried dribbling. Things were not just working well, but he got the goal. It, it, uh, I think it's his fourth goal in, fifth goal in like um, 11 appearances. So he's scoring a goal every other game, which is such a good return, especially for someone who's, who's playing down the, left, uh, down the channels. Uh, but you not know, just him. We saw what uh, Danso Nchetambe did during the friendlies. This is a player who's just earning uh, his call up. We've seen what, um, what Sakari has done. Yes. We saw what Mazembe did. You know. um, so, yeah, basically, like I, I was saying, the application and the ability and the talent and you know, the hunger and the drive that um, most of these local players have shown, I think is just something that um, has, has been quite encouraging. So we need to look at Chan as well. Maybe World Cup qualifiers may be so difficult, really, because you know, I think the, the process is, 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 is quite uh, tedious and also you get to meet the big guns. But we are Kenya, we, we, we've been almost there, so we just need to psych ourselves up. But yeah, there's a so, lot of work So after to be the done. impressive performance by the local youngsters, is mm. Jacob goes to Mule in dilemma? Because in the event that those foreign best players who didn't you know, link up with the team mm. travel, of course there is that aspect of jailing youth and experience, blending mm. part of it, which might work or fail to work for the team. But now that you know this pool of players are available, all of mm, them, mm. will coach be in a situation of dilemma in terms of his so. selection? I don't think so. Because I'm looking at the players who were left out. Obviously, the biggest one was uh, Victor Wanyama, the yes. captain for quite some time now. Um, I'm looking at uh, the midfield right now. I think we, we are quite good in, as far as the midfield position is concerned. Johan Molo? And uh, even him. Uh, Johanna, even him. I, I, don't, I don't feel he, he'll, he'll offer much. Um, much more than what, say, Lawrence Juma offers in the team right now, or even Kenneth Muguna, who I think is the best midfielder we have in the country, yes. and probably even in the region. Um, 
uh, with obviously with the Lawrence Jum, I think for him he, he's growing strength by strength. He just keeps getting better, like 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 old wine. You know. And also now Akumu, we saw the, the kind of application that he brought into the team until obviously he was hauled off. So I feel like the central midfield position, uh, you know, we are talking about it's eight, taken ten, care of. six. Yeah, it's taken care of. Whether you want to use um, a double six, you know, um, a double pivot, you have your two number sixes, and then you have your your number ten. I feel like that's that's taken care of. Whether you want to go the traditional way, you have a holding midfield. So, so people like Eric Johanna, you know, Ayub Timbe will have to fight for their places in the team. Definitely. It's not a guarantee. It's not a guarantee, which is really good. It's a good headache to yes, have. It's yes. a good headache to have. So, yeah, Johanna, the good thing with him is performing. Eric Johanna, you know, he's, he's bringing in the assets, you know, in, in his uh, team abroad. Um, with Johanna Yo Omolo, um, I, 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 feel, I feel he's moving to clubs too many times, yes, so he's not yes. settling well, so that's affecting his game also, and his understanding with, you know, the kind of players that he is playing with. Same can, can go with, uh, we can say, of Ayub Timbe. Also, the other thing with Ayub is injuries. He's quite injury prone, so he's not playing a lot of football. He's mostly on the treatment table, so that's working against him. Maybe he's looking at his uh, younger brother, uh, Musa Masika. Uh, probably will take up his role. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's, there's a lot of tal talent really in, in the Kenyan team. Um, I don't know. I don't know why we are not getting the results. So last year, when you know, uh, sporting activities were suspended mm -hmm. by the president, and the league was equally suspended by FKF president Nick Mwenba. You know, the then current uh, league uh, table toppers were given the mantle to have won the league. That is Gormaya. This time round. Can we witness a scenario where Tasca now will be crowned champions in the event that you know the situation escalates and surge in numbers continues? <coughs> oh, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> I haven't thought of it. We just never <laughs> waiting, you know. Yeah, we have to look into the future. <laughs> things happening. It will only be fair that they do that, right? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, it will a few only games be fair. have been played so far. Uh, a few, a few is, is a bit of uh, an understatement yes. because <laughs> they almost uh, yeah, into the second the, leg. Yeah, into passed. the second leg of the season. Um, but remember, also you don't have like a, a, a huge window as far as you know. Just um, how many games are left to play, and in such a short time, the league I think was supposed to end by around July. Yes. Yeah, but now we are going to lose like um, at least a month of football. So the calendar is going to be ever so tight. Remember even right now we've been playing with quite a, um, a tight calendar. There are games in midweek and there are games on weekend. You know, so players, you know, there's a lot of uh, games happening. Obviously, there's a lot of fatigue also uh, that, that, that's getting into the players. But yeah, uh, to answer that question, um, in case in case the league doesn't um, reach the, the crescendo, then um, yes, I, I don't feel... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering, you know, you, you don't, you don't <laughs> think that you know Tasca deserves to be given the um, title. <laughs> you know, the one thing that uh, caught me uh, is when it was happening in England and my Liverpool was in such a prime position to be declared champions. I was like, there's no way we should not get that title because we deserve it. So I'm thinking though with the, with Tasca, I feel like the number of games that have been played are not enough. I feel like it's not enough. Is we are barely half into the season, right? We played, I think, around, uh, is it 15 to 17 matches somewhere in there? I haven't checked there yet. But I feel the season is still young. We, we should not just uh, give it out like that. We can still restart. But hopefully we, we don't have to go that, uh, that direction. Uh, let's just hope that um, what the government has said, uh, if, you, if you follow it, and obviously the vaccine is right here now at least to help us contain uh, the infections and all that. Let's hope by the time uh, we'll have the, the next address uh, next, uh, next month, the numbers will have uh, dropped down significantly. And... Uh, football or even sports generally will be back on the table. Definitely, of course, we can't finish a uh, discussion on local uh, Premier League uh, football mm -hmm. without touching on international soccer. We've seen Zlatan Ibrahimovic, that nine year old, yeah. making a comeback for Sweden and mm -hmm. he, he, he assisted a uh, 1 0 win against Georgia. Yeah. This man is not getting tired. <laughs> he has goals in him. That is what happens when you have goals in you. Like goals to him just comes naturally. But can you attribute this to these countries uh, failing to put up proper structures that uh, will lead to no replacement of the aging players? There is no continuity. Uh, to, to an extent, because yeah. him, 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 him getting recalled means mm -hmm. there are no options. But remember, in terms during of the forward department, yeah, during the previous World Cup, I think uh, Sweden did quite well. They went past the group stages. Yes. It was quite a quite a tough group, but they were lacking goals. 
uh, most of their games were either one one draws or nil nil slim. You know? yeah slim 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 defeat or a very um, low scoring games so as far as the defense and um, is concerned I, I felt like they were they were quite uh, compact you know they they were not conceding much but they were not scoring on the other end that's why they couldn't they couldn't go beyond and in Zlatan Ibrahimovic this is a player who's who's delivered in 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 in, in Ajax in in, um, in in the French league in in the um, in, in the in the Italian league, obviously in the Syria, so he always has goals in him. So him getting back there, I think it was it was not um, a case of him trying to find the goals. They were in him. He just needs to get one or two chances. And uh, the good thing with him, he has that confidence and arrogance in front of goals. Yeah. Yeah. And his personality itself, you know, just just attracts those those balls to him. So yeah, scoring for him is, is quite natural. Very few players like him. Before before you leave the show, I know you are a diehard Liverpool man alongside. <laughs> <laughs> the noisy Gregory Mulemi and another <laughs> noise maker in the likes of Eric Njiru. Yeah. You guys now, it's, it's done. It's, it's a done deal for you in terms of your the Premier, Premier League. League title bid. Yeah, it's, it's gone, man. It, it's quite unfortunate. I think it's one of the, the saddest stories of, uh, of this year. <laughs> post. You want to attribute that to injury? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's obvious. Um, I think the, the fact that we lost Van Dijk uh, to, a, to a ninja, that was a big one. Then Gomez followed, then Matip followed, then Fabinho followed. Like It was just injury in all departments. So uh, we lost uh, people, obviously, uh, some influential players on the back line. Then you know, you're know you having some influential players in midfield, like the likes of Henderson, the likes of Fabinho, now coming again to play in, in defence. So you know the whole chemistry of the team was uh, affected like to a big extent. And you know when you... When, when, when also remember that Liverpool also when they're playing at home uh, and there's that noise from the cop end, it pushes them like to the very, to the very limit. So with that also plus the injuries, I felt like we lost, we lost um, uh, th those two things. When we lost them, uh, it kind of affected uh, our chemistry and our flow and our confidence to a big level. And also, I mean, Mo Salah, uh, Sadio Mane, Bobby Firmino, they were not firing. Jota comes in, scores like in four or five, yeah, and he gets four, five games, get injured. So... Yeah, I felt injuries uh, let us down in a big way. But hey, look here, we are in the quarterfinals of the Champions <laughs> League. We are facing a Real Madrid uh, team, and uh, I don't think. What do you make of the pairings? Mm, good, good games, good games. Um, you look at the, the pairings. I think they are like the best teams in Europe uh, right now. Obviously, but Porto probably that was the team that everyone was wishing they they will get. Chelsea have them, but um, yeah, they, they are quite important uh, fixtures. Let's see what what happens. But I have a strong, strong, strong feeling and um, a great conviction that we are going to get past uh, Real Madrid, uh, Liverpool in knockout games. They are a different animal, and uh, Real Madrid will will get to see that. It's a matter of wait and see. Indeed, a very interesting conversation. That is why time has elapsed, even yeah. without exhausting the talking points we had. But it's been a pleasure having you, Steve. You know, it's been a while and good to see you, man. Yeah, good to see Thank you, you for coming through. Thank Touchline you. comes uh, uh, to an end on that particular note. And of course, let's do this next time. Saturday, same time, same place. Always an honor having you on board. Continue. Uh, washing your hands and sanitizing and keeping social distance and ensuring that you comply with the guidelines put in place by the government if we have to combat this monster. For those of you who are passionate about sports and every weekend, especially Saturday afternoon, you visit uh, the local sporting ground to catch what is happening. Maybe we will have to sit in our houses and watch you know, European football and the international break is here and a lot of qualifiers and friendlies happening. So we've got no option. Hopefully, things will resume normally. God bless you. Have a nice weekend and keep safe.